uh, welcome to Let's Play Gothic 2! Um, so, I decided that this can't be the end of Mansa's journey, aka the main character. There must be something else to it than just, you know, ending the way things did in the first game. So, I'm continuing his journey in this game. And by the way, great thing about this game is that you don't have to play Gothic 1 in order to enjoy it. Uh, there's actually some dialogue options that, um, well, that you can choose if you are not familiar with some of the characters or other things about the first game. And they sort of like explain it to you. I, however, will be going the route for, you know, if you actually know the first game. So. Big spoilers <laughs> if you're new to the Let's Play and never played Gothic in your entire life uh, and stuff like that. Um, and I actually want to mention something before I start. Um, if I remember correctly and uh, uh, say something in the comments if I'm wrong, but um, if I understood correctly, when this game was translated from German to English, for some reason, um, there was a mistake in uh, translating in one of the cutscenes and some of the dialogue options in terms of uh, the timeline. And uh, you'll know what I mean right now once we start the new game. So before I actually do that, let me just quickly bring up the SFX volume to normal and uh, let's begin the new journey. A single prisoner altered the fate of hundreds, but he paid a high price for it. the sleeper destroyed the barrier but while all the other prisoners escaped he remained behind in the rubble it was I who dispatched him against the sleeper now it is I who brings him back from there he is weak and has forgotten much but he is alive He's back. There you are again. I never thought the two of us would meet again. I feel like I spent three weeks lying under a load of rocks. Well, so you did. Only the magic within your armor kept you alive. I had feared I might not be able to rescue you from the debris of the temple, but enough of that. You're here now. There's a new threat that we have to deal with. And before we go with the new threat and stuff like that, um, if I remember correctly, it's not actually 13 days that passed. Um, I believe it's actually been a month. So if you get confused by, you know, the different timelines or days that people throw around about the time since the barrier was broken, um, there you go. It's been about three, four or more weeks for... You know, since our character was <laughs> just chilling under a pile of rocks. Um, so, Sardis, relax. I everything's fine. At least we have enough time now. I did it. The sleeper has been banned. 
you vanquished him, so much is true. But it's not within our power to stop the war that ensues now. With his final furious scream, the sleeper has set into movement the armies of darkness. It was an order to all evil creatures, a word of power that they were all bound to obey. His last order was, come, and they came, all of them, even the dragons. Dragons? They are creatures of an ancient power. I can sense their presence, even here. And they have gathered an entire army of lowly servant creatures around them. Where's this army now? The army is camped not far from here, in the Valley of Mines near Corinus, and they're getting ready to attack. But that's not all. There is another threat of which I have learned only recently. Yeah, and uh, his voice sounds a little different um, because I actually have the add-on Knight of Raven. And I believe the add-on was created not immediately. I, I think it was like maybe a year or two later. Something like that. So if you hear different uh, voice changes, it's because of that. <laughs> so, Zardus, tell me more about that other threat. After the fall of the barrier and the banishment of the sleeper, Belyar's wrath has grown even greater. A mighty artifact, so it is written in the old scriptures, will be brought back to this world when the god of darkness sends his henchmen out to search. This search has long since begun. Belyar's henchmen are desecrating the oldest shrines of the gods. The guardians of these holy places have awakened, and their wrath makes the earth tremble. Every powerful magician on this island could sense this wrath. And some of them have certainly begun to face the threat. You must become their ally. That's the only way to stop Belyar. What can we do? This time we cannot handle it by ourselves. Only the power of Innos will help us against these dragons. A group of paladins is stationed in the city of Corinus, not far from here. They possess a powerful artifact which could help us to defeat the dragons. They call it the Eye of Innos. You need to get hold of this artifact. Tell the paladins about the threat. You must convince their leader to support us. And once you have talked to him, you need to find the artifact of Belyar. It is the counterpiece to the Eye of Enos. It must not fall into the hands of evil. So you're suggesting that man will basically be a walking heathen that carries the power of both Enos and Belyar. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting, Zardas. Uh, yeah, what exactly is uh, the artifact of Enos? What exactly is the Eye of Innos? It's an amulet. Legend has it that Innos himself was poured part of his power into this amulet. It will restore some of your lost strength and help us defeat the dragons. It also has some other hidden powers. I shall tell you more about that once the amulet is yours. Why would the paladins give me the Eye of Innos? Because you are the one who is destined to wear it. How can you claim to know that? There are a number of reasons. The most important being, you have defeated the Sleeper. If you weren't a favorite of the gods, you'd be dead by now. Let's assume you're right and I'm destined to bear the Eye of Innos. How would the Paladins know that's true? The Eye itself chooses the one who may wear it. Once you get hold of it and put it on, the Paladins cannot doubt your words any longer. I need weapons. I can only give you whatever little I have here. Look around in my tower. Anything that looks useful to you, you can have. How can I get to the city? Just follow the path from here through the mountains. The city is large. You cannot miss it, but watch out. The path to town is not without dangers, and you aren't nearly as strong as you once were. 
I'll be on my way as fast as I can. Good. And one more thing. Don't tell anyone that you've talked to me. Above all, don't tell any magician. Since I have gone into exile, the circle of fire has taken me for dead. And that's a good thing. Okay, one second. Chapter one, The Menace. But... Okay, gotta be quick. Gotta be quick. It's mine, Zardas. <laughs> Go get rid of different book stand. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I was literally just waiting for this to happen because he always goes for this book stand and then it's really hard to um, get him off from it. But anyway, uh, so the book stands actually are readable now. So we have uh, alchemy in this game. You can learn alchemy and craft potions that... Uh, either heal you or restore your mana or they give you permanent stat boost so over here on the left is um basically all um not all but uh, m the most common mana potions you'll encounter the essence being the the least amount of mana and the elixir the most um so they use all the fire plants and by fire plants i mean like fire nettles fire weeds and fire roots as it says over here and um, on the right, it says, All work at the alchemist's bench requires a laboratory flask, which is used up in the process. To brew any healing potion or potions uh, to strengthen magic power, you need a special ingredient and a plant, meadow nutweed. To brew any potions that affect permanent changes to the body or spirit, you need a certain plant, King Sorel. Um, both Mido Nutwit and King Sorel aren't really that common, so you need to be very sparingly about um, getting it and uh, using it up. Oh, I have a, an old stone tablet. Let's read it. Uh, I can't read that. Duh, you can't read it. Zardus, maybe you know anything about it? I know I said, like, you know, a couple of seconds ago that I'll be on my way, but hey, that was you... a lie. That was a big fat lie. Can you tell me anything about this stone tablet? First, I suspected it might be a magical artifact, but I finally concluded that it is not of any great significance. I have not been able to decode the meaning of this tablet entirely, but it seems to concern the history of a very old culture. If you want the tablet, it's yours. I have no use for it. Thanks. Uh, maybe eventually I'll decipher it. Yeah. Um. Where exactly are we? As I already said, near the city of Corinus. I have rebuilt my tower here. But it's only been a few days since we last saw each other in the Valley of Mines. The servants I summoned to build my tower have done a thorough job. Uh, you can say that again. <laughs> yeah, a really thorough job indeed. So yeah, um, anything else about equipment? Where can I find better equipment? The closest place where you can get better weapons and armor is the city of Corinus. But down in the valley, you can find some healing herbs that will help you if you get injured in a fight. See the lake right in front of my tower. A secret passage leads to the valley from there. Why is the Circle of Fire not supposed to know about you? I used to be a high member of the Circle. Even then, I suspected that demon magic might be the key to the magic barrier. But I could never have convinced the other members of the Circle to follow this path. So I left the Circle in order to study the Black Arts. That is a crime for which the fire magicians, the ordained of Enos, the ever good and virtuous, will accept no excuse. They are certain that I'm still alive, but they have no idea where to find me, and that's a good thing too. It's kind of interesting that um, you, well, you described the circle of, ma uh, circle of fire kind of snidely, even though you were part of the same circle. So I'm not sure how to feel about um, the accurateness of your statement just now. So what should we do next? We shall proceed as planned. There's no other way. You can go get yourself the Eye of Enos, and I shall keep looking for answers. And by the accurateness of the statement, I... Um... Oh, thank God. Well, see, he's leaving the book stand now. Uh, by accurateness, I meant, you know... Why, why? I mean, he he was part of them, so <laughs> he must he must have been exactly the same as he described them. Then I guess. Why else would he be part of the Circle of Fire? Um. So this is the healing stand. 
And obviously you use healing plants. And they are obviously called healing plant, healing herb, healing root, blah 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 blah. And they have completely the same requirement as the mana, which is uh, uh, Meruna Tweet for uh, healing your spirit and King Sasoral uh, to, per to permanently boost your stats. And this is the Alchemist's Bench, but we don't have a Lab Flask, but we do have an Essence of Healing. It restores 50 HP. Now over here, we have a Rune Table. And yes, in this game, if you decide to follow the Path of Magic, uh, you can craft runes with which you cast spells. And, ooh, we have a chest and a potion. So for those of you who don't know, you can actually get through the gate, and the secret is over here. There's a button. But first, I wanna get a heavy branch that's always there. You know, I'm not, a, uh, I'm not new to this game exactly, although I don't know every single secret of the game. But there you go. <laughs> I know most of them. Ooh, and we got gold and fireball and healing, which I'll never use, probably. <laughs> I'm very stingy about uh, everything that I pick up or use, so, uh, you know. Also, let's equip the heavy branch, because I'm pretty sure that's gonna be um, one of the better weapons at the moment. And my game stutter stutters occasionally, I assume. That's because it loads uh, different things all the time. Oh, a key. For this chest. Lovely. Oh, five gold pieces. Zardas, you're dirt poor! Couldn't you have, I don't know, collected more gold for me? Uh, light spell, which I'll probably never use. Lockpicks, and we got a, a toothpick of a dagger. But in reality, it's actually about... Um, it's about the same length as the heavy branch, except it deals far worse damage than uh, everything else. So, we have more reading material. Yikes. <laughs> so this one says, the way of battle. The best defense is a good offense. At least against anything non-human. It's useless to parry animals or monsters' attacks. It's better to keep the foe at bay with well-aimed blows and then launch a surprise combination attack. Of course, only experienced fighters can combine their moves. If you become a master in the art of battle, you can even use several combinations. Thanks. Uh, the text was kind of bleeding through the pages, though. Uh, but uh, this was basically a little um, tutorial about combat in this game. Uh, the island. The harbor, the harbor city of Caridus lies on an island off the coast of Kingdom Mertana. The island owes much of its fame to the, valley, uh, to the Valley of Mines. Its reputation is dubious, as for many years a magic barrier spanned the entire valley, which served as a prison for all convicts of the realm. Thus, the valley became a prison colony where the convicts mined the magic ore far below the ground. Outside of Caritas lie a series of farms which use the good soil to plant wheat and turnips and breed sheep. For generations, the largest farm has belonged to a landowner who rents the surrounding lands to other farmers. On the middle of the island is an ancient monastery of Inos, led by the Magicians of Fire. There, they conduct research of magic and alchemy and press wine, aka they make wine. But wow, um, if it's been only a month since the barrier was destroyed, they publish books about it so quickly. I mean, seriously, really quickly. Now this one. Ah, this is more about the permanent potions, and you should know this because the ingredients for all permanent potions aren't as frequent as well, so you need to be sparing um, with that as well. Uh, so obviously, you know, Dexterity Potion requires Goblin, Fair, uh, Goblin Berry plus King Sussurrel. Speed Potion is the only non-stat boosting. Uh, it only increases your speed for a minute or two. And it requires Snapper Wheat and um, Middle Knot Wheat. Then we have Elixir Strength, which requires one Dragon Root. 
Elixir of Life, uh, one healing root, and Elixir of Spirit, which requires one fire root. And obviously plus King Sorel. Yeah, I, I basically it's easier for me to verbalize than to read all of that. Um, and uh, you obviously need to learn skills to uh, learn how to craft those stat boosting potions. But if you're too lazy, you can actually eat the plant and get plus one stat boost from um, whatever the plant gives you. Uh, except for healing and mana. Um, those use the basic uh, fire and healing plants. Now we have hunting. Hunt and prey. Every beast or creature has certain trophies that improve the wealth and glory of experienced hunters. Bloodflies. Two special skills are required to gut these flying devils. Their wings can be removed and their stingers extracted. Both arts should be used by experienced hunters to claim their trophies. Field raiders and mine crawlers use mandibles to attack. Mine crawler mandibles are particularly valuable as they contain a secretion that increases magic powers. However, it should be used sparingly as the human body ceases to react to it over time. Minecrawler plates are also popular. They can be used to make armor. Now, the Minecrawler th mandible thing is actually new from the first game, but what this book doesn't mention is that you can actually do the same with Bloodstingers. Uh, you can use bl Bloodstingers to heal yourself if you know how, ex how to use them precisely. Because you can actually die <laughs> if uh, you just consume it without knowing um, how to exactly heal with them. Uh, now we have the continuation of the book Hunt and Prey. An experienced hunter knows all about trophies of the prey and how to gut them. Extract teeth. Teeth are the weapons of many beasts and creatures. If you know how to extract them from your prey, wolves, snappers, shadow beasts, sh swamp sharks and trolls are the best targets. Skinning. A talent experienced hunters value greatly, for many animals have pelts. Sheep, wolves, and shadow beasts, for example. A hunter with a skill can also skin swamp sharks and lurkers. Extract claws. An art to be used on all kinds of lizards, snappers, lurkers, and shadow beasts. By the way, they have some erroneous sentences that are not grammatically correct. Ay ay ay. <laughs> um, anyway. Ooh. We have the statue of Belier, Zardus. Why are you praying to Belier? I get it that you're studying the black arts, but seriously. Ooh, and uh, we have something down there. I see fire. So we should get down there completely. Now, let me show you something. With Statue of Belier, you pray, and what you can do is you can sacrifice, permanently sacrifice your health uh, to get money. But the problem is, it's kind of random. It either works or it doesn't. See? It didn't work for me, and I lost some health. And uh, I used to have 40 hit points, actually, and I do remember that. Uh, because that's what you start with. And now I have 30, and he zapped me with his lightning, and that's not what I want. <laughs> um, same thing can be done with a statue of Venus, except um, instead of health, you sacrifice money, and uh, he can give you stat boosts. But it's random, so you might. Oh, why am I going this way? But it's random, so you might wanna, you know, save it up. Now. Over here is the exit, but there's actually a secret alcove over here, and you can get down like this, or you can clamp up through the rocks on the side, and I can I can even show you how to do that. But uh, there's a secret stash this way. Potion, yeah, this is the stash. Oh Jesus. Maybe I should disable wind in this game, because it's uh, sometimes weird to see the trees moving in the ground. I mean, seriously. It's a little weird. <laughs> uh, I'm probably gonna go back uh, after I finish this playthrough and do that. But uh, if you want to get down, um, I mean, get up, up there, you just come up here, and here, and here. 
And voila, you're over there. Easy as that. So, if you want to do le the less dangerous way, uh, there you go. Now, we haven't finished looting Zardus' tower. And by the way, Zardus! Finally, you grew smart. You now actually have an actual ladder. Well, not ladder, staircase. Because your last tower didn't have any staircases. And it was kind of tiring to keep jumping off the top of your tower <laughs> and trying to land in the water or transform into things. That's so annoying. <laughs> oh gosh. No, seriously, you had to do that in the first game. Zardus. Ugh. Yeah, we have uh, the lab water bottle, which is, you know, which you used to make um, potions. Um, and we picked up fire arrow and some water. Blah blah. Nothing too interesting, really. Now. Ooh la la. Zardus, why do you have a dungeon? Who did you torture? I mean, if you look over here, there's a skeleton. See? There's a there's a skeleton. So Zardas, why did you torture somebody? And I'm gonna pick up all the gold pieces <laughs> that are laying around here. But seriously, Zardas, I'm a little bit worried now. Hopefully that's not gonna be my fate eventually. Ooh, so here's some collection of plants. Blue elders, meadow berries, woodland berries, dragon roots, snapper weed. Oh, and here's the belt. Nice. Goblin berries, fire weed, healing herbs, meadow berries, dark mushrooms, nettles, more berries, and blue elders. Uh, so you can actually eat blue elders because, as far as I know, it's not used in any crafting. And, ooh, five strength bonus. Nice. And uh, there's a bunch of other things that you can eat. And by the way, this is the goblin berry for dexterity potions. And this is the dragon root. Just so you know. And if you want to know what snapper weed looks like, it basically looks like this. Kind of like the healing herbs and nettles. Sort of. And that's about it, I think. So finally we can get the hell out of here. And... Let's see, let's see. I know usually there are plants hiding in the bushes. That's kind of a thing in this game. Ah, there you go. We got digger's meat. Ooh, lovely sheep. Well, I don't want to kill you. You're actually harmless. Ooh. Uh, there is a wolf down there. And there's also another secret stash up this way. And our first enemy, the mean goblin. That went easy. Lucky me, that was super easy. Now, this another stash that I know of is actually this way. Through the trees. <laughs> it's so hard to see. There you go, I found it. And it's a short bow. Our first bow in this game and the most weak bow <laughs> of the game. But it's good, but it's good for starters. And we also have a bunch of scrolls and a potion. I actually didn't know what the scrolls are. Uh, the bow does 15 damage and it requires dexterity. And yeah, I just picked up a bunch of the same spells I already had, so no big deal. Anyway, <clears throat> what I wanna do... Oh, I'm hearing more goblins. Uh, what I wanna do for now is actually... Oh! Ah, I know I missed something. I missed some gin. Now, what I want to do is go this way, defeat that wolf, and do uh, a bunch of other things. Okay. So, are you gonna attack me? There you go. So I got some meat, it's raw meat, you can eat it, but um, you can actually cook it to get more health out of it. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have anything to, to cook with. Is there anything? No? Okay. 
Oh, someone's dying. Well done. Oh, I got some XP. What dirty beast like Oh, sorry. I interrupted your conversation and your head. Oh, good sir. Your head is in a rock. That must be really painful. <laughs> um, so yeah, more goblins. Usually goblins like to uh, stick in groups, so that's how you can easily die from them. They're weak, but um, at least the normal ones are. They're weak, but you can die super easily. Uh, one second, dude. Let me just loot everything and steal everything. I mean, um, take everything. I mean, borrow everything. Ugh, I cannot, I cannot speak the language of nice, uh, intelligent language. Ah, gosh, I'm having problems right now. <laughs> anyway, ooh, so many dead people. Cavalorn, at least that was your name, right? Cavalorn, why do you have dead people in here? I hope they're not with you. But I'm glad I managed to nick that one goblin, so... Oh. One second, this is a terrible camera angle. What about this hey, one? Hey, you! There you go. This is better. Trouble? Damn. I don't know where they're all hiding. You kill one, and shortly afterwards, they're all back again. Wait a moment. I know you. You're the fellow who was constantly baking arrows for me in the Valley of Mines. Ah, so you do remember me! Your name is... Cavalorn, right? Ah, uh, I see you haven't forgotten me after all we went through in the cursed colony. Where are you heading? To the city. Well, well. To the city, eh? You may run into problems with the guards. They aren't letting just anyone in anymore, since the area here is swarming with bandits. In the past few days, one of those former psionics from the Valley of Mines came by here. He said he constantly goes in and out of Corinus. He went into the valley below the big tower. There must be a way in there somewhere near the waterfall. Maybe you should talk to the fellow. Ah, well, I know where that is. We just killed the goblin there. And we're gonna go back there precisely because Cavalorn said that someone is down there. And I wonder if that fire we saw was actually, you know, from that certain psionic someone. So let's see. Um, yeah, that's some interesting armor you have. Interesting armor you're wearing. Don't you belong to the Shadows anymore? Shadows? They haven't existed since the fall of the barrier. The moment we could finally leave the Valley of Mines. There was no reason for me to stick with them. Now, I work for the Water Mages. I belong to the Ring of Water. What are you doing here? I'm sitting tight. If it hadn't been for these damn bandits, I wouldn't be here. Tell me more about the Ring of Water. I'm not really allowed to talk about it. All I can do is send you to Vatras. He is the representative of the Water Mages in Corinus. The best thing would be to talk to him. Tell him you've come from me. Maybe he'll take you on as one of us. We urgently need more good people. Ah, finally, I'm getting some networking around here. Finally. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's gonna be very useful to know someone or something. Um, yeah. Weren't you and your people enemies of the Water Mages back then? Those crazy old days are over. There isn't any more new camp or old camp. Now that the penal colony no longer exists, everyone is on his own. Most of us former prisoners are still being hunted. The Water Mages were able to get my sentence commuted, and now I can move about freely. What are the Water Mages doing now? They're up to something big. It has to do with an unknown region of the island. An unknown region? Where is it supposed to be? I can't tell you more. Talk to Vatras in Corinus. I definitely will. Don't worry about it. What was that about bandits? Have you slept through the last few weeks? Huh? I'm talking about all the riffraff from the penal colony that are making themselves at home here in the area, plundering and murdering for all they're worth. <sighs> I guess I'm lucky they didn't kill me. I let down my guard for one moment, and they clubbed me from behind. No idea how I'll get all my stuff back now. You were robbed by the bandits? Yes. They beat me down and tossed me to the goblins for lunch. It was damned important stuff. 
a letter, and all my money. I absolutely have to get it back. But without someone to watch my back, I'm not going back there. That cowardly rabble. Ah, I see what you mean. Can I help you with the bandits? Maybe. But as scrawny as you look, you surely haven't held a proper sword in your hand for weeks. Well, I don't have any choice but to take your offer. My time is running out. So, pay attention. Down this path here, you'll find one of those filthy holes in the ground that bandits like to hide in. The fellows there are the same ones who stole my stuff. Let me know when you're ready, and we'll nab the rabble. First of all, do you have anything for me? I need better equipment. Those swine haven't left me much. I can give you a wolf knife. Will that do for now? You call that a knife? But what about healing? I still have two healing potions here. Interested? Sure, give them here. Now, I'm not actually gonna help you just yet. I'm actually gonna check out that psionic you mentioned. And also the wolf knife is really a toothpick <laughs> and well almost a toothpick and i cannot equip the rusty axe you know i don't have enough strength and the wolf knife is way too short for me to use at all at, well the way it is right now so i'll stick with the heavy branch thanks <clears throat> at least that'll have to do for now and we're gonna go check out uh, where that psionic is Should be somewhere down there. There you go. Now, what I want to do is save because I heard goblins. Ah, yeah, see? There's the lovey dovey. Well, are you coming in or not? Finally. Okay. That worked very successfully for now. Ooh, dark mushrooms. Ooh, more mushrooms. This is quite a shroomy place. Okay. Now over here, I'm actually gonna use my bow. Because there's three of them. And that's something that I actually do remember. Ooh. Well, I made it. But I think I lost quite a few arrows. Yeah, I have I have only three. And what I want to do is use my bow. Probably um outside of here. Ooh, there was a weird earthquake in the game. Uh, so another toothpick, mana. Oh, and an apple. You know what they say? An apple a day keeps the doctor away, or something. Oh, another mushroom and another chest. Uh, oh, lots of money. I'm getting rich, guys. I have $95 uh, gold. <laughs> I was about to say $95. Uh, why do I almost say dollars? Uh, 95 gold pieces. I'm hearing nasty things. And I know precisely what they are. Again, the earthquake thingy. That was so bizarre. Now, over there are the nasty fellas that we're hearing, and there's two of them. And I might die. If one of them saw me. Whew. No, I'm alive for now. Now, let's see. What do I want to eat in this case? I think I'll eat the fish because it's the most useless one in this game. And I'd rather eat the metal berries or woodland berries. They're not the most useful ones either. Yeah, metal berry too. And now we can take on this bug. critical hit. Uh, that was very lucky, but I really, really need to um, level up my uh, one-handed fighting, because 
he doesn't really hit too flexibly. Also, uh, just a heads up, I'm actually doing a dexterity-based character. So there's not gonna be that much investment into melee fighting except for uh, one-handed and up to around 30%. If you look at this thing, we are right now at 10% with everything. So that's why. Um, and that will just help me to get through the first part of the game, more or less. Um, especially the difficult parts. Uh, but however, uh, the be even though the beginning is really rough, um, it's gonna be a, a much, much better the further we progress. Ooh, I don't wanna die. <laughs> so, let me see. Over here, there's another stash that I know of. Some scrolls, probably uh, much of the same of everything else. And let me just heal myself because I'm very nervous about this. Now, a nifty trick I like to do is um, scan the area with my bow. And I hear a wolf, so... Oh, there you go, there's a person, Lester. Ah, there's more young wolves over there. And I leveled up, so hey, that's good. Yeah, there's two of them. I don't know how this is gonna go. Eh. Okay, and this went better than I expected. And I'm gonna talk to that person once I clear out the this area. Where are you? Oh, there you are. got a hit on me, but that's fine. Now, I probably will eat some of these, but not too much, because Blue Elders recover your mana. So that's not something I really want to do. Now, over here, this is going to be problematic, because we've got a bunch of young wolves, and... Oh. Oh, weird. Usually, um... Hmm, okay, then. Ah, uh, I am too late. Yeah, I'm too late. Ah! Okay, I am an idiot. <laughs> okay, so problematic. A little bit, but not too, uh, not too, too much, but... Um, if I understood correctly, there's usually... Oh, I'm over here. There's usually a rat near the wolves, and I think one of them just killed it. There we go, come at me. There we go, Crit critical hit. Uh, got you. And... Where, 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 where? There we go. Now we're gonna get this one. Somewhere behind the fern tree. Cool. And by the way, if you noticed, all of them are young creatures, which means, you know, it's mostly for the tutorial to teach new players about, um, this game and how to fight. 
Likewise, this one over here, this first bug, or not first bug, but hmm, what was it, a third bug? It's also a small one. Hey, that worked. Now, I'd like to save and go down this way. Because there might be some peculiar characters in here. There we go. I was totally right. There was another one. Oh. What the hell are you doing? Right, come here. Come to Papa. Or to Mama. Depending on who you consider the main character. Me or man. <laughs> the main character of the story is obviously man, so... Come to Papa, I guess. Ah, I'm hearing something else. But it, um, lucky for us that something else is actually not here. As far as I know. Ooh, we got a leather satchel. I just noticed at the, at the edge of the screen. Hey, there's this weird circly object on the ground. <laughs> uh, right this way. Let's enjoy this. Ah, more rats. You have so much meat. Thank you very much. I like your meat. And this is a very weird tomb. I mean, it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. Who is this? Is there a name? Lotar or Eotar? I cannot tell which one it is. Oh, I think it's... Oh, I'm stupid. It's Eotar. Duh. Not an L. Ooh. So the shaking is from here. Well, I don't see anything else to pick up, so... Let's get the hell out of here. It's kind of creepy. <laughs> Now there's nothing else in this valley to kill, so we can actually just calmly start collecting plants and everything. That'll come in handy. Ah, there you go. The first one. I usually feel a little more calmer if the area is completely cleared to go scavenging for loot and everything. Oh, well, at least that's how it is with me. And also, there's usually a bunch of loot uh, that likes to hide in the trees. Or like, you know, right at the tree stumps. <laughs> uh, that's how usually it is in this game. You gotta really go in the nick of it to find something. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes not, but I know some areas where there's usually something. Where the fern trees are. Oh. I'm hearing another creature. And I know exactly what that creature is. However, it's also not here. It's actually right above us. And that creature is actually a boar. Oh, wow, there's another leather satchel. Now that says something new to me. I never found it, ever, and I'm getting richer. Look at this, I have 170 bucks, I mean gold. <laughs> uh, anything else? No, not here. Uh, this is the best way to kill your camera, I guess. <laughs> to make your viewers very annoyed that there's too much stuff going on. <laughs> All for the sake of having everything collected. Also, I didn't collect some stuff, I just uh, came very quickly down here, so... Yeah. Anyway, I think that's almost it. We can now talk to this... Psionic at the fire. Ah, wait, no, there's nettles. Never mind, Psionic, just wait for me. I just need stuff. Stuff that I'll never share with you, probably. Actually, that depends. If you're a good person, I probably will share something. Oh, you stood up. You noticed me. Hi there. Is that you? Really? Man, am I glad to see you. Yes. 
Wait, I do know you, Lester, and I do remember you, you old shark from the swamp camp. Lester, how did you get here? That was a crazy escape. After the barrier exploded, I wandered around the area for a while in total confusion. Then I spent days fighting my way through these woods until I finally found this valley here. Diego, Milton, and Gorn are still in the Valley of Mines. At least, I think so. What happened? After the Sleeper was defeated, the entire Brotherhood lost their minds. Without their master, they were all just empty husks. And you? What about you? It was the same for me. I had nightmares and even hallucinations. But once my head was more or less clear again, I ran for it. Once, I thought I saw a huge black shadow pounce on a group of fugitives and burn them all up in a giant cloud of fire. At that moment, I really thought a dragon had come to kill me. Did you see anything else? No. I took to my heels and ran. Probably a good thing too, it saved your life. I mean, there are dragons in the valley now, so... Yeah, let's, uh, let's tell him this. I'm on my way to Corinnus. What do you know about the town? Corinnus? Well, it's a seaport. Nothing special. Why do you ask? I must go and see the paladins who are said to be in town. <laughs> really? Uh, they won't even let you into the town. And certainly not to where the paladins are. Do you have any suggestions how I could get into town? I certainly do. I worked for an old alchemist named Constantino some time ago. He has great influence in the city and he's instructed the guards at the gate to let anyone through who can sell him rare herbs. So it's quite easy, really. You collect a large bunch of the plants that grow here all over the place, and then you pretend you're working for Constantino, and in you go. But don't collect a mix of this and that. The guards aren't all that bright, and they know nothing about alchemy. The bundle needs to look good to them if you want to get through. I think that 10 specimens of the same kind of plant should do the trick. Thanks for the hint. Yeah, and uh, by now we should have at least 10 of some sort of plant because we looted everything from the valley. At least I think I looted everything. I'll have to check. How long have you been hiding out in this valley? I don't know exactly. A week, maybe? But there's one more thing. When I came here in the evening, I took a look up on the mountain and there were only a few trees there. And when I looked the next morning, that tower was there. I could have sworn it wasn't there before. Since then, I haven't left the valley. You mean Zardus's tower? I knew he was powerful, but creating a tower just like that. Zardus the necromancer? He lives in that tower? I don't know if I like that. Don't worry. He's the one who rescued me from the sleeper's temple. He's on our side. Yeah, wow, Zardus, you impressed me. I mean, I thought you were building your tower maybe like within two weeks or something, but come on, in a day? Scratch that, in half a day? Because Lester was, you know, he woke up and it was in the, it was there already and he was going to sleep? Seriously, Zardas? Wow, that was really quickly. But yeah, sure, uh, um, yeah, you need to tell Zardas about what you saw. You need to tell Zardas about the shadow. It could be important. You don't think it was my imagination? You mean there really was a- Dragon, yes. You're getting into the thick of it again, am I right? Yep. I shouldn't say in the thick of it, not yet. Well, good. If it's so important, then I'll go see him. But not now. For the moment, I'm going to rest. I'm still exhausted after the escape from the penal colony. I think you've got big plans. I'll see you later at Zardas's. Oh, uh, wait, do you have anything else for me? Yeah, what do you know about the area? What do you know about the area? If you keep going down that way, you'll come to a farm. The city starts a little way beyond that. But be careful. There's not just wolves and rats hanging around here. There's goblins and bandits, too. Uh, actually, when he said uh, that way, he actually meant follow the road past Cavalorn, basically. But thanks, Lester. It was so nice to see you. Um, I hope you're gonna have a great time. Uh, uh, at least chatting with Zardis and, I don't know, maybe resting or something, because you look, like, terrible. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, this looks like a swamp, and it feels like a swamp now, so... 
Anyway guys, so we're actually out of time. Um, I really hope you enjoyed uh, this let's play and I really hope you enjoy the game too, you know. Um, you should definitely check it out on GOG or Steam. I uh, actually recommend GOG because that version seems to be far, far more stable uh, on, um, on, a, on Windows than the Steam one. And actually, that's what happened to me. I had a, I have a Steam version of the game that I originally bought years ago, but I couldn't play it. I had to buy the game again, but from GOG, and that version worked, <laughs> which, which is the current version I'm playing right now. And it sucks that I had to do it. I had to buy the game twice, but um, anyway, but um, I still hope that, you know, you'll give the game a shot because it's different when you play it yourself as opposed to watching it. It's a totally different experience, and you tend to notice some things that you don't, or, you know, stuff like that, basically. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye!